in Regina, Saskatchewan. That's right. Nice. Born and raised? No, I was born uh, born in Toronto. Okay. Raised uh, for some of my my adolescent years in Newfoundland, which is where Newfoundland's sort of home to me. That's when I, when people ask me was home, I sort of think Newfoundland. Came back to Toronto and I did the rest of my growing up, uh, such as it was uh, in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, I'd never really been out west, and when I joined the RCMP, they said, where do you want to go? And I said, well, I'm a city boy from Toronto, so, you know, put me somewhere where it makes sense. And they put me to uh, Wadena, Saskatchewan, which, of course, I had no idea where that was. Right. You know, it's like a thousand people, uh, population when everyone's home. So, uh, but at the same time, you know, it was, uh, perspective was key, right? You know, what, how are you going to look at that? Because the first six, eight months, I hated it there. Um, but, uh, but nonetheless. I've been here for almost uh, ju- just over eight years, actually, now here in Saskatchewan. So, yeah. family? Yeah, so I, there? yeah. I have, like, I have my wife and my my uh, two daughters here in Saskatchewan with me, of course. Uh, but the rest of my family, you know, my folks, like, they're back in Newfoundland, my cousins, and there's some in Newfoundland, some in Toronto. Right. A little bit, uh, but all that to say, no one uh, outside of my own immediate family is here uh, in Saskatchewan. Wow. Yeah, Newfoundland's a place... That's on my bucket list, but what a beauty. The, yeah. The landscape, the vibe. Um, I hear the people are great too. Yeah, man. Like, as you can, you know, you can see the most beautiful f- pictures in Newfoundland, of course, or of Newfoundland. Um, but it's really the people that uh, sets it apart. So it's, it's not just the pictures, it's the vibe. You got to feel it and got to be a part of it to understand it. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it is one of those places where um, it's almost like the, I love the mountains too. You know, so you know you can see photos and you can see video online and whatnot, but until you go there and see how small you really are, uh, it's the same thing out there, man. Once you you get immersed in that vibe and uh, can change who you are, man. If you're not careful, it'll change you. <laughs> oh, for the better or for the worse? Better, no, for the better. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm surprised you stayed in Saskatchewan, didn't move a little further west to Alberta, the Canadian Rockies. I tried. I tried from from depot, like right from the academy. Oh, yes. Tried, and, uh, and they're like, "Nope, you're going here." And uh, when I did my time, so I've been around Saskatchewan, sort of all over the province, uh, which is which is great. I mean, home is where you hang your hat, right? Home is where the heart is. Um, so, but when when both my wife and I, who, who she's also a member, um, when we did our time up north, uh, we sort of thought, okay, you know, that's sort of the protocol, you know, do two, three, four years in the South or central, do a couple of years up North. And then they, they deem you what's called releasable from the province. So, mm-hmm. you know, we did have Alberta on our, uh, on our want list, uh, but because of the pandemic, um, they were really slowed down and halted the, those interdivisional transfers. So mm-hmm. not able to get, um, uh, we wanted anywhere, like we were so open, like, you know, we had like 20, 20 different attachments uh, in Alberta because there's so many great, uh, opportunities when it comes to a couple so, because there's fairly large detachment areas around you know whether it's calgary red deer or edmonton um but there was just they're like no you can stay here so your options were you can stay here up in the north and and wait it out to see what's going to happen with this pandemic thing or uh we you know they offered us warm in saskatchewan and warm is a great little little city so um our our daycare provider and our daughter's age at the time, all those things uh, collided into a decision that said, no, we can't stay here. We, we do want to, we do want to leave. So we, we went to Warman, which, which was great. Um, but. Mm. No, that's amazing. And now how many years has it been for your wife and yourself to be a part of the RCMP? Yeah. So it's been just over eight years for me. And uh, my wife is about a year behind me. I, I did not. We, we met sort of when we were on the job. Like we didn't know each other okay. during beforehand. We met, we had some friends. I thought, hey, you might like her. You might like him. And, Perfect. Uh, yeah, so it, it turns out they were right. <laughs> Love it. Love those stories. And two daughters later. Two daughters later, man. One's like brand new, that brand new car smell still. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, she's four weeks. Actually, today is four weeks. Four um, so, weeks. yeah, we're pretty excited to have the additional human. Awesome. How did you get started in creating the social media account um, and loving all things social media, creating content? You're doing a great job, by the way. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Uh, So it's a good question. And it was a little bit of a pandemic birth. Mm -hmm. Um, However, the vision started before 
the pandemic. So the vision, that, so I'm going to take you back just a little bit. I don't want to spend too long or anything, but basically my story is when I applied to, I wanted to be a police officer. That was first and foremost, air was secondary. Um, so I applied in 2009. So I applied to Toronto city police right. and I was a member with them. So like a volunteer officer, I would help out with community events, parades, um, mm ride-alongs, whatever. Um, and I was doing that for two or three years, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but there was a hiring freeze. I don't know if you remember the economy back in 08, 09. It was pretty tanked. Yes. And freezes were kind of everywhere. So as an auxiliary, you just volunteer your time. You're not paid. Um, so, uh, so, but I, you know, you apply anyways. You sort of dribble and shoot. Mm. At the same time, I applied to the RCMP. Now, the RCMP is nothing I wanted. I actually went with a, a buddy of mine who, um, he's like, but hey, come keep me company. I want to check out this uh, information session with the RCMP. And in Ontario, RCMP isn't as common as it is out here. You know, you don't see them as a general duty mm -hmm. thing. So uh, I had zero knowledge of the RCMP when it comes to their day-to-day -day stuff. Um, so I went with him. And today he's like laying drywall or something. And, and I'm here. So a little bit of ironic how the yeah. table sort of turned. So, But it took me five years to get in. Uh, I, you know, I didn't fail anything. I wasn't deferred or anything like that. It's just the, the timing and the, the resources and the, you know, mm -hmm. the, and hiring and all that. Um, so the steps came slowly. And, uh, and as I encourage everyone to take the step in and live your life, you know, because the application process is sometimes lengthy and you can let it consume you. Oh, for sure. A total of about five years for me to actually get to depot. Um, uh, little side note when i was at depot my third week of training toronto actually called me with a job offer <laughs> anyways i i was uh, I'll, I'll get the academy training so thank you but not now um so but you going through that process of five years i just i was absorbing anything and everything as far as information goes man i was soaking mm -hmm. in, knew how little i knew and so i needed to kind of broaden my horizon a little bit and open my understanding a little bit like what is this rcmp thing what's not only of course what's in it for me but like what can i give to it what can i give to uh to an organization who you know is committed on serving communities and, and all that so um with with that in mind i really wanted to utilize social media listen social media can be the most poisonous yeah. thing in the world um however it, it's also great and i didn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, as the old saying goes so I just, you know, I had a vision of, of being a resource for those people who are in a process, whether it's policing or not, whether it's any kind of first responder, um, to be a resource that they can sort of lean on to get some information, to get, some, you, mm -hmm. know, it's, you know, ever evolving. So uh, to kind of what's the latest and greatest and how can I, how can I as an applicant become more competitive? You know, well, here's some of the things I've done, you know, even gear, like flat, like what flashlight, flashlight. What, Things like that, you know, here, this is, and I don't, I don't promote it as any agency. This is just Steve. Hey man, I'll, I'll use this flashlight thing. Works for me for these reasons. I wish it was different for these reasons. And if it can work for you, cool. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. I don't, like, I don't get paid nothing. I don't, it's not like that. I just, I have information and I have a passion. And when you combine those two things and you can kind of present and, and uh, you know, with, with Instagram and YouTube and those social media platforms, it, it sort of opened up that avenue so that I can, um, you know, engage my, my passion to, to inform people. So I hope to inform, you know, educate, entertain, and just a resource for those folks who are going through a process and they, they want some of that sort of, look, I, I know I'm a recruiter now, technically that's my title. Mm -hmm. This was long before I was a recruiter. So it, the whole real cops, real life, I'm just being real with you. So, you know, there are things about the whatever agency or whatever first responder avenue that you might be in that I just don't like. And I don't mind saying those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then there are other things that I do like. So I'll say those things, too. So um, that's kind of how it started, man. It's just a long time to get in. And I, and I just thought to myself, what, what answer can I come up with to this question? And the question was, what would I have liked to have had when I was going through those five years. Yeah. That's what I had to do. For sure. And, you know, oftentimes we get nervous to put ourselves out there. It is a, a nerve wracking thing. What will the internet or so-called the world think of us? Um, you know, for your failure, for your judgment. What if I get in trouble for what I say? How are you able to overlook that and just say, the goal is bigger than me. The purpose of why I want to do what I want to do is big, bigger than me passion purpose yeah 
Well, I definitely do not overlook that. In fact, I take that very, uh, I take those things very seriously. Like what we say, look, we're all human, man. We're all going to say oh. things that the difference now is that it's recorded and it's, it's uploaded and then it's copied and pasted and whatever else. Right. So the, the challenge comes that, yes, I have to be extra careful of what I say for sure. And it's not because I'm being fake. I'm being, I'm being reasonable. You know, I'm being, um, I want longevity. And so there have been situations in our world and in our, our social climate over the last few yeah. years where people have asked me my opinions and if I could go online to talk <laughs> about opinions on certain things. And my answer to that is simply, do I have an opinion? Maybe. Does my opinion matter? No. And the, 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 what I have learned along the way is that platforms can easily become that launching pad of just turmoil, negativity, and whatever you want to call it, it can become that. And I've just oh, yeah. chosen how you know real cops real life to be that so let's say you know zach asked me a question and i answer it and now it's on social media and my opinion may not even be uh, uh, that far left or right or whatever it could be just right. a, a fairly neutral but because of that question was entertained someone else you know down the road who's who's you know his keyboard warrior person he's he, he may jump on that and then someone may jump on Jimmy and then that, you know, and it becomes the thing. So I've, I've, there's a couple things that I do. That's very practical. One, I keep my opinions to myself. Um, real at the day, does Steve think of this particular thing or that particular thing change anything? It doesn't. I know I try to be the influence in my world and I try to, you know, better those who are around me and to realize that life is more than just, you know, this six, seven inch screen, whatever it is. Totally. That, that's the one. That's the life. But the other thing is that I'm very on top of it. I get comments and messages. Um, sadly, uh, I get them from from members too, whether it's this agency or that agency or whatever, who just don't like me. And maybe I've said or done something that has offended them. And I obviously it's not intent. Um, maybe it's even people I know because when you're, you know, when your username is is you know Jim Bob 101, I have to do who you are. And it's very easy for someone to get what I would call keyword courageous and they want to voice their concerns over that, over that veil of, of anonymity. And I'm just like, man, you might live there. I don't live there. So I don't respond to those things. I don't, I don't pain those things. I simply you know, block and delete, block and delete. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, even that, if you respond, you know, again, it depends on the circumstance, but if you respond sometimes to negativity, It'll either quiet them because they've got the attention that they needed or it will amplify them to say, let's keep going. And, and even if you said that's actually not true or, you know, if you stand up for yourself a little bit, you're just going to, they, they want that. That's that type of person. They want confrontation. And um, I don't know, like you said, time is better spent off of that and onto positive things. And it doesn't matter. You're right. It doesn't. So find a gadget you like. A flashlight. What works? What doesn't? I mean, we all need a good flashlight. That's a great example, but it's so true, and and especially in your field of expertise. Yeah. Well, I you know they often read in lumens, right? Lumens. Lumens. There we go. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Lumens is a level of brightness, but then there's you know the throw that you'd have to consider. So depending on what you're doing, do I want a very wide uh, illumination, or do mm -hmm. I want a long throw spotlight? Yeah. And and those are things that. You know, with those gadgets or a flashlight, you know, that's just, that's just my own experience. And all I'm doing is talking about that, whether or not you buy that flashlight whether or not for your purposes. It, it doesn't you know. matter to you. It's just what you want to talk about. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Because people, just about every video that I ever, I ever do, every post that I usually come a question or, or, or a multitude of questions. Hey, Steve, I'm graduating from the Academy. Uh, I need a good flashlight. What do you recommend? You know, mm. or, Hey, have these pair of boots i'm uh, looking at getting something different what are your thoughts and those are things that i i don't mind offering my thoughts because that's all they are the, you know these work for me and i'll say it once i say it a thousand times you've got to figure out what works for you the, you know so by me explaining to someone how it works for me and why you might have the same how and why and great then they will probably work out for you 
if not, it, you know, it, then they're not work out for you. You think, well, I don't, I don't care about how heavy my boot is because I don't really walk around a lot. Okay. Then mm. you may not, you know, you might think that's 30 or whatever. Right. So those are things that I don't mind, you know, sharing my opinions about. Um, and, but yeah, even, even those things, you know, I comment times or messages like, you know, that I'm a puppet or that I'm a whatever. And I'm just, is, it, is this from like, law enforcement or is this, or from members or is it from the public civilians? I don't know. Oh, I guess right, they're because they're behind. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Did you ever watch the show? There was a Netflix series. Um, uh, it's, it's Michael Jordan's and I wish I remembered the name. The, the Last Dance. The Last Dance. There you go. I really enjoyed uh, that documentary. Mm -hmm. And he said a couple of things that rung a chord in, in, uh, I also like to coach people. I've coached sports teams in my life. I've coached, uh, recruits like on the field, you know, I've coached uh, different student program and so on. So, uh, I do enjoy coaching and teaching and, and training and all those kind of things that, you know, uh, I remember I, I put up a quote on my social media directly from that. And, um, uh, and someone thought it was about them. And they, they got sad or offended because they thought it was about them. So then that person, you know, didn't have whatever was needed to come speak with me uh, in private. Because listen, Zach, if I have a problem with you, guess who I need to go to to talk about that? You. I don't need to share it here. I don't need to tell my, you know, my coworkers, my mom or my whoever. No. And, you know, I need to go to you. And so this person was upset and, and I, they thought it was about them. So they told coworker who then approached me and he was trying to kind of catch me. And, you know, I just, I didn't have the energy or the whatever to even explain that this had nothing to do with them. This had, you know, this was a, a, a because sometimes in their minds, it, their mind already made and their decision, whether or not they, mm -hmm. you know, it's already done. Nailed it. No matter what I, no matter who says it oh yeah i don't believe you know so yeah. there's things that you know lose your battles that was just a, that's just a, a rubber meets the road example of things happen things get, things get there's no tone on social media and if you have if 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 you were to post something on your social media and i love what you're doing by the way it's Thanks, awesome brother. if you something and 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 it strikes a chord in me i might send you a message be like hey man can we ch chit chat for a minute and then, yeah, sure. And we talk. If nothing, it's because we're a province away. We phone. Uh, hey, this is what I'm feeling. Oh, Steve, no, I, this is what I meant. Cool. And we can deal with it. Uh, but simply because of the keyboard through the, through the veil of anonymity, um, sadly, I think we're losing touch sometimes on, on socializing, communication, and, and genuinely listening to someone's heart. Look, I, I can hear the words that you say, but I need to really listen to what you're saying. And those two different things. So that's context, just an example where context, just, context, man, it's everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because so if I wrote to you right now and I said, hi, if I texted you, hi, you could literally take in so many different tones, depending on what you're dealing with. You know, you could have been like, hi, or hi, period. However you take right. it. And that's not, that's absolutely maybe not, you don't even know what I'm thinking. Nope. Right. So. And what if your high wasn't even meant for me? What if it was a slip of the finger and you don't have to re reply to maybe your spouse or whoever, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, and, and it just, you know, and I think we've all maybe have been there, we've done, you know, sent it. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to send that to you. I meant to send that to someone else. So maybe it, it has nothing to do with you, but you're so right. Because then uh, what happens is we overthink. And if we don't, if we can't really go to what's called the horse's mouth, the, you know, go right to the source. You know, we're going to be losing sleep and there's absolutely zero need for what that. What do you think it is? Do you think it's our, we don't want to face it? Is it lack of communication? Is it our egos where we say, well, you know what? Screw that person. If they wrote that about me, I know exactly that's about me. Again, might be a quote. I put up quotes all the time and guess what? It's an internal battle. People don't realize, and hopefully I hope they do realize that life is not all about them. You know, everyone is dealing with something in their life. I mean, you've got a four a week old baby, uh, another daughter, your wife, being a dad, you know, all these things. You're busy. <laughs> you don't need to worry about what other people are doing. And uh, how yeah. can people filter through that and realize that, you know what, pick up the phone. 
that's why back in the day, picking up the phone worked. You know, when I talked to my dad, even texting, he's different, but he'll pick up the phone and he's a different person because <laughs> Your parents don't know how to, you know, their, their texting is one word answers. So there's a guy I was going to meet up with a, a friend of mine. He's maybe 60 now. And I said, Hey, um, we're meeting up. Yes. Period. Oh shit. Do you not want to meet up or something, man? Like we're good or what? Sounds good. <laughs> but you see him in person, he's larger than life and so happy to see me. But on my way there, I'm thinking, eh, I don't know if this guy wants to see me. Am I forcing him to, I don't need to. Yeah. perception right we yeah. play these stories in our heads and guess what that will affect our mental health 100 percent, it will and I, it I does think, <laughs> yeah sure it does. i think miscommunication and i think really that's what it is it's a miscommunication it's not always you said or didn't say the right words it's you you mentioned the word tone earlier right it's it's the tone in the context of what you're talking about and i think that there is this interesting generational thing where my dad is the same way man like sometimes i'll text him this long thing and just thinking about just all this thing today and it made me remember the time whatever and you know hey do you remember that time yep and that's it right <laughs> Dude, because but now here's the thing so but then when we call talk to each other on the phone it's completely different and if, and he even gets um like if i were to say man you got to say more than yup mm -hmm. in his mind in his mind, it was, you asked me, do I remember it? I did. I remembered it. That's exactly so, it. <laughs> there's just this, this, this miscommunication thing that happens. And, it, and I wonder, times, it's almost like, I don't know how you feel about uh, if, if you write someone something on text and they respond with K. Oh. It, tell me this isn't different. K, OK, and then like OK, A, Y, right? You're saying the same thing. But those three things are, 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 they're heard differently. And depending on what I've got going on in my mind, depending on however the rest of what was happening in my life at that moment, I'm going to read those things differently. Yet it's the same thing. 100%. The word K with the period at the end. Is it, are we good? Are you mad at me? Right. What's going on? And, and I, I think that sometimes social media has a part to play in that because, you know, I, I love memes like the rest of us. I think they're fun, at least when they're good. Uh, but th th there are things and, you know, you see memes that would suggest things and you almost you relate to them. That's why memes can be so cool. Because, yes, yes, that's right. That's how I, I feel. And that's how I feel, too. Uh, and there are memes about certain things. And then so you, you take that information when you get that, and it, you know, say next week, some someone you read that meme about K period. And then next week something happens and you're just chit chatting with someone and Zach sends you a message and he says, K period. It's almost like I've been conditioned by the meme, by the social media. I've been conditioned that way. Mm. And because it's that it, it's not as good as the O A Y. Now I think there's something wrong. So I wonder so I, before social media, you know, we had um, flip phones and we used to use something called T nine. Like you have to press it three times, just text something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we were as sensitive back then or were we? I don't, I don't think, so, think so. I really don't. I wasn't. I don't remember that I was. Hmm. Well, I think that sometimes where now I can, whether even like a text uh, or like a voice text, you know, you can say a lot in a text right now versus a T9 back in the day is like, Hey, I'm just going to, I'm just get Zach. I'm going to call you. And the other thing is, how many times, how many memes have we seen where, you know, people call or the phone rings and be like, what's that? You know, and, and in my so case true. with my phone, it's an unknown caller. Well, no one's going to answer. Even my dad, I'll have to text him first and be like, Hey man, I'm about to call you. Oh. Uh, and, and so it's a weird, funny thing, but, it, but there's an underlying issue in this of communication because that underlying, uh, like how dare you, like my phone rings, like you can't just call me. You need to set me up. You need to like tell me first, you know, well, back in T9 days and even before that, it was like, I didn't have time. I didn't have time to type out things to you. I'm just, I'm just going to call you. So that was the norm. You talk to someone, you hear context now, you hear tone now. And I think that I, th I love technology and I love the ability to chat with my dad every day through whatever. Um, man, there's nothing like a conversation. And then what's paramount to that is that one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, the benefit of technology is, if you want, you can spread messages 
again, it's a choice you have. Do you want to spread positivity? I mean, it sounds hoaxy poxy, or do you want to be spewing negative energy? But that is a direct reflection of who you are and how you're feeling inside you. Yeah, I love memes. I love I love to laugh, and <laughs> I'm silly. I'm a goofy guy, but there's this other part of me that truly understands um, darkness, and uh, you know how we can all work together, communicate. If I didn't have social media, we wouldn't be talking right now. If we didn't have Zoom, we wouldn't be talking. We wouldn't have even met. That's so these, you know, utilizing platforms for the better, I think is great because so many of us probably are thinking the K period, um, you know, all, all these contexts that we have in our head and perceptions of what we think it is versus what it really is. Yeah, Like the 100%. thumbs up, you know. Oh, buddy, don't send me. I don't know that. <laughs> hey, man, hey, this is what's going on today. Whatever, whatever, Just say, you know. And then this is what I get. <laughs> yeah. It just makes you feel like the person doesn't care much. So like, cool. Yeah. And it, it does make you feel that way, but it, it, the person could very well care. So here's, here's something that I've actually tangibly uh, will do and have done and implemented in my life to help ne negate that. Because I think that we're not alone. Uh, so because I'm aware of that now, I have to mm. ask, I have to bring it back to what can you do about it? Like if no matter how silly I might think it might be, no matter how oversensitive I might, because I am, you know, that musician, that artist, that, that right side brain guy who, who is, is, uh, you know, uh, those that I heart on the sleeve. And so I, I am sensitive, but how can I, how can I help the situation out? Well, the situation is if I send K period, you know, could, that could potentially upset someone or at least not even necessarily upset them, but make them overthink things. And now they're losing sleep and now it's playing on their minds. And now they're like, man, it's the third person that sent K dot to me. And, and now, man, is it me? Am I, you know, so because of that, what I've tried to do is if, if someone sends me uh, uh, what I would say a, a little bit more of a deeper message, more than just say, Hey, sup, <laughs> you know, maybe a little bit of a deep is I actually I actually will reply until I have time and attention to, to reply. And, and it's almost like an email. Like, let's say, you know, you send a message or send an email and I get that email today and I don't respond for three days. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a level of importance that I need to give to you. If you send me an email, uh, I'm not even going to bother checking my emails unless I have some time to reply to those things. Or at the very, at the very least, it, it's, if it's, a, if it's a text thing, Hey, uh, yeah, let, let me get right back to you or some, something where I'm going to try hard to not make this person overthink and just to let them know, because I, I don't want to answer K period. I'm going to take some time and, and reply with a, with an actual, you know, addition to the, con uh, to the conversation. So that's just the thing that I've done is that I try cool. to not even reply. Mm -hmm. to yeah. Except there's this new feature. Uh, well, it's been around for a little bit. But I might tap the message and it says seen. And I, I might be busy at that moment and I can't respond. Now you have to give that short message because that person will feel like, well, wow, I wrote something out and Zach just left me on scene. Yeah. Because right. in real life, and we that, don't do those things, do we? We don't. We don't because we, I won't, if it's not for that, if it's not for that side of technology, uh, let's just say it's a face to face thing. Like you're, you know, we're going to, we're going to have a moment to, to speak with this one, to converse. Yeah. It's just, it's a communication thing, man. And I just, I, I, I love social media. Obviously I love technology. It's great, but man, there are some, and it's growth, right? Ultimately as a society, we are growing and with growth comes a lot of growing pain. So that, I think that's some that's of those amazing. ideas that we're, we, we try to, we try to get them as best we can. Oh Yeah. When it comes to your YouTube channel and putting yourself out there, um, the world has been interesting, especially to, I guess, law enforcement. How have you been able to ignore the noise and not let it personally affect you? Uh, no, that's a good question, man. And I, and I do get that quite often. And th so there's a couple of truths. First of all, it does affect me. It, it does. Um, pad. I've, I've had people use some of those previous um, big story things in the past, like verbs, you know, like verbs or action words. Um, and the rude words like they like, you know, I've had this said to me several times. Are you going to George Floyd? me? 
Oh, Jesus. Okay. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm in, like, I'm in northern Canada. Like, you know, <laughs> like that. Yeah. I'm in the prairies, man. <laughs> right? You know, so the answer, yeah. so those things, like, they, they, they do and can affect you. But, uh, you know, the, so here's the, here's the word is perspective, mm -hmm. right? So yes, there is a lot of that. I've had, I've had weird things happen where I feel like I've been in situations where someone was eyeing me and I got the vibe, just the vibe. Okay. So there's no real merit, mm -hmm. or, you know, credibility, just the vibe that had I not been aware of my surroundings and had, had I not been sort of tuned in, uh, something could have happened bad. Um, because when you have the word police on the front and back of you, uh, I recognize that that potentially comes uh, a little bit of a target for some. And you have to, you know, th there's that balance, right, of, of being um, cautious and uh, hypersensitive, uh, you know, but and to, to make to make uh, to make smart decisions. Um, so I've become heightened aware of, of those things, uh, but hopefully not to the point where, you know, I'm out mm. with my family and these clothes and now I'm this. there are some bleed overs for sure, no doubt. But here's the thing, man. The, you know, the old, the old, uh, was it the old news, if it bleeds, it leads like that whole news thing where they want those big stories. If it bleeds, it leads. Um, but I got to tell you, man, there are been more positive things that's happened in my life. And like, in, when it comes to my, my work stuff there, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? So that one, if you're in a car, four wheels there, one, yeah, it's squeaky and it's loud and people are defund this and we hate you that, and you're a puppet to this and yeah, it's there. Mm -hmm. Either spend my time thinking about that and just you know kind of uh burying myself in that but there are three other wheels in that vehicle and man they're getting me where i want to go they're they're doing well for me and so uh i can i can do what i can do and and recognize that that's all i can do and I can't control the way that you might perceive me or the police or that whole like you're wearing a uniform so i you have to come to terms you're not angry with Steve Watkins. You're angry at a situation involving the uniform that Steve Watkins happens to be wearing at this moment. Mm. And that's it. I don't and know so about you I'm guys. Do you guys have, do you have thin blue line out there as well? Do you guys, like, is that a thing? Because in Calgary, it was a big thing, thin blue line. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that is a thing. That, that's a thing out here where, um, I don't think it was, I don't think here in Prairie Land, it was a, a big a deal as it was in other places around the world. Um, I, you know, I, again, talking about opinions that don't matter, opinions matter, but I think that we need to keep perspective on, on the big picture. And we, we need to, uh, without, without allowing those slippery things, um, in the end, if someone has an issue with something that is a Velcro piece on my, on my yeah. uniform, let's just, let's, I'm not going to be like, well, let's just bend over and just do everything. Everyone else. That's, that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. But in the end, if this is causing divide, causing these things, it, does my support to my my brothers and sisters on in the front lines, you know, does does my support waver if I'm wearing that or not? No, I still love them. I still support them. I'm still family with them. Absolutely, it's bigger than that. My actions and my reactions and my um, my support has to go beyond a Velcro sticker. Yeah. So if it's such divide. I got to be honest and just say, man, let's say you're my partner, Zach, you're my, you're, you, you and I, we know each other. Um, if I'm not wearing a, a sticker, uh, I don't think that you're going to look at me any different and negative tone or, or whatever. So how dare you not support and love me, man? Like, I, you know, what the heck? You're not wearing your thing, <laughs> right? I don't think that's going to happen. No. I think that, but if, if I'm wearing that and, and it's causing this divide, um, what's written in my heart could be very different than what's stuck on my on my vest does that make sense for sure and so that's where you know you need to choose your battles and and listen we have uh help me if i if i start preaching a little bit but we we have we have so many battles in first responder world and i and i mean the world of first responders i'm not talking about policing just law enforcement or anything i'm definitely not specific to any agency but what i'm saying is that we have so many battles i'll say out there 
out there on the road, out there staffing shortages. We're tired, we're burnt out. We feel like we have support from our upper management. We're going to these calls. We, we get in, we start our shift and there's so many backed up calls, backlog things. And we got to, we're like, man, well, I'm one person. I'm trying to get to there. I'm we're making split to second, split second decisions that people will forever scrutinize because of video and everything else. But we're doing that with, by the way, uh, uh, you know, life at stake kind of situations. So all of those things that are happening, as they call it, out there, the last thing that we need, man, is to be able to, is to have to come into an office setting to where my brothers and sisters are and, and have more battles fight amongst each other because we don't know how to communicate because someone looked at someone the wrong way or because you don't like the way that I police. Maybe you would have handled that a little differently than me. So, so now there's just this weird internal battle. Like, mm. come on. Has this always so been a much- thing, though? Has that always been a thing where... You know, whether it's policing or just anybody, you know, in a corporate Canada world set, uh, set, you know, you go in and you don't like somebody because you did it this way. They do it that way. Um, is there ways to resolve that stuff and just move on and just realize that there's a bigger challenge here. We can't be tearing each other down. You know, this is all we got. We got each other. That's it. Yeah, I, I think it has always happened. And I think you're right. Not just law enforcement or anything it's it's happened Mm -hmm. Uh, in my adult life uh i i know i've worked i mean before policing i was a pastor for a dozen years it happens in the church man Mm -hmm. so it happens everywhere and so yes it happens everywhere but i i I would just highlight that certain stress levels when you're on a first responder platform there are stress levels that just Mm -hmm. are heavier to deal so, so, so things are amplified internals. now than ever, right? Because of the world we're living in today. I mean, we just, I don't know if you say we're, we're in a pandemic, are in a pandemic. I don't. <laughs> so even if I posted that part up right now, I would get in trouble. Right. Because if I say, I know people. Will be, well, you have to ask yourself, right? What good will come out of entertaining that? Zero. That's right. It put That's me right. in a negative, and- actually. Yeah, you'll, you'll end up losing, right? So I get, so the comments or, or the, the, the messages that I might get, and, and because I, I've chosen from the beginning, and I got to, you know, uh, Joe Rogan is someone who I, who I listen to. I don't always agree with what he says. I think sometimes he's out to lunch. Uh, but uh, what I've always appreciated about him is that a couple of things. Uh, I, I do him entertaining. I find him a good uh, conversationalist, and I enjoy a lot of the guests that he has. But he will encourage his friends all the time, up and down, left and right. He'll say, can't listen or can't read the comments. Just don't go there because he knows it's a cesspool of, of, of negativity for a lack of better term. And if you do that, and it's so hard not to. So when I get these comments and as much as I want to reply, I want to stand up for myself, right? I want to tell that mm-hmm. person, no, man, that nothing to do with that. That quote was from this. And, and, you know, but if the shoe fits, you know, <laughs> where the shoe, you, you know, you want to go down those, those paths, but I really don't think that there's much benefit going down those paths. So I have to just kind of chalk it up to just the block and block. And there was a, there was a fella, a friend of mine, a, a past coworker of mine. Uh, he went to a new spot to work and he says, Hey, so-and-so he's my new coworker. He doesn't like you, Steve. And I was like, he doesn't like me. I, I don't even know that person. Right. Yeah. But. You block him on, on social media. And I was like, well, I don't remember blocking him, yeah. but I can tell you that I block anyone unless there's a reason, like some sort of silly comment. And so even just by doing what I think as Joe Rogan's, you know, uh, uh, advice is to not entertain those things as much as you want to try to do what you can. And I just choose to not entertain that stuff. If I delete and block, now all of a sudden I'm a bad person for doing that because it ruffled someone else's feathers. So you're right. You win. So all I say is, um, I get time and time again, messages and comments and just people who love on me and just, Hey, Steve, thanks so much for yeah. being with me. Man, you answer great questions. And that's all you can do is just keep it at face value and be like, those negative things are people reflecting where they are in their life. And for one reason or another, they choose to say these bad things. I'm going to not focus on that. And it's the easiest thing to say. It's one of the hardest things to do. Um, and because, Steve, you're, you're here you on this to... podcast for a reason. It's because you're not spewing negativity. I'll just tell you that, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. there's hope you're showing happiness. You're showing real, um, 
but you're you're bringing light to a time where we need it most you know what what are you gonna what is it gonna serve you and the people around you and followers to see you hating on people or taking tearing other yeah. people down right yeah 100 percent. Right. and i think that people okay so people um I don't like to to use the word jealousy here because I don't think that is necessary. That's the word he bad, used, right? by the way. That's the word he used. So I, I wonder though if sometimes I think there's two two players in that game. One just jealous because I'm not I'm not doing that. Jealous because I think that you are benefiting in these different ways. You're getting known. Whatever I don't know whatever the term they want to use, but so and I'm not. So that's just not fair. And then the other the other side of the thing is is I feel guilty because I'm not doing anything, but you're doing stuff that I believe is making an impact. And when we're positive, and we and I listen, I share messages, and and uh, whenever someone sends me a message, like a direct message, I always ask them, of course, for permission before I share anything. But it's like, hey, Steve, I got the golden call. I'm going to training in three weeks or whatever. I love that, and I'll share those things. But then what happens to the haters is that they see that and they're like. They're like, oh man, I'm not, you know, they're almost like, and I could be way in left field, man. I don't know. This is just speculation, but you know, it's like, what, I wonder if there's a gut check to themselves, like a self gut check to be like, I'm not doing squat to help, you know, uh, the, the problem. Well, what's the problem with well, their staffing, staffing, uh, you know, shortages or whatever the problem might be, positivity or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing any of that. So I hate that this person is doing that and I'm not. And whatever reason, whether it's just they're, they're jealous or, or not, um, or we, you know, and maybe some of them, it's just like, hey, you shouldn't be doing it. Like one of the things that I'm very careful with is, is if I'm in uniform, especially, uh, and I'm going live or I'm doing a video, I, I am very careful. I, just because I post something in this moment doesn't mean that at that moment is when I did thing. So it could be following my shift. So my shift is over. I've clocked out. I'm not on the board. I'm still in uniform. And there, and I want to maybe relay a message that kind of have, maybe I come across or, or whatever. Uh, or maybe if it's, uh, you know, back to school. So I'm just encouraging people to drive safe because the kids are running around, whatever the thing is. And if I'm choosing to do that in uniform, I, I try to be careful. And I say, I'm clocked out. I'm not on the, I'm not on the clock because I do know that there are some people who would look at things like that. And like, you're doing that on the clock and you shouldn't be. And so that's just getting back to those battles. I'm not. Um, but why do we do always we have, have to breaks? prove ourselves? Like we always have to. So if you don't do anything, then you're fit in. Then you're great. Then you're quiet. You know, don't be too loud. Just, just, yeah. just stay quiet. Just get by life. Rock, don't rock the boat. Well, guess what, son? I like rocking the boat. Not because I want, not because I want to flip over. It's because I want to make change. I want mm -hmm. to make things different. I want to make things better. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you, endeavoring to make things better uh, the boat's gonna rock and you can either help people uh, or you don't but the, i think the, the least that you can do hey you know what zach i did a thing yesterday it's a true story i did a thing yesterday i saw on social media something that someone posted that i didn't agree with and i just scrolled on it that's it i just Wait, scrolled on you're it. saying you didn't stop and write a comment publicly and shame them hmm I don't I believe it or not. It's it's doable. We we can just scroll on and then unfollow button if it gets really bad, <laughs> and that's okay too. I mean, but I you think see it's on time Facebook or Twitter, and oh my God, some people just ripping people apart. I especially Facebook because well, Twitter's bad. I know that, but they hide right. They hide their names. They hide their face on yeah. Facebook. I'm thinking. I know you and you're writing things like that on somebody else's. <laughs> well, I don't care what that person did. I'm almost judging you now. And I don't like judging, but I'm almost right. thinking, is that the kind of people I want in my life that are tearing other people apart like that? Because guess what? That could be me one day. And, you know, yeah, maybe it's that yeah. empath in us. That's the other thing is like treat people the way you want to be treated. Right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And by the way, on the thing too you know people i've seen i've had to call out people not not as a recruiter i mean this is even before recruiting nothing like that but hey um zach i know you're in the process man you know the, and i saw a comment that you made listen you might want to consider removing that and and i'm just you know call it announcement call it a private yeah. service announcement yeah. but be careful what you because there are eyes that are on more than just the thing on your wall well posting and actually uh i think it was mark cuban a few years talked about it uh, your digital footprint. So people are going to like even see what you're liking now. 
So why are you liking mm. certain posts, right? And obviously yeah. the algorithm feeds that, but just in general, people will watch what you're liking. I mean, I don't pay attention that much on someone's likes or who's liking what? Oh. No, it's, it's um, a new world we live in. That is for sure. It's a very sensitive world or is it amp is, has it always been sensitive and we're just amplifying messages? It echoes a lot further. Well, I think, I think it's both. I think that there is a sensitivity increase. Um, but I also think that 100% it's been amplified um, just because of the world that we're in. And, 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 you know, they say knowledge is power, right? You've heard this before, knowledge is power. And, and there's a lot of truth to that, but not all power is good. And not all knowledge is, and not all knowledge is correct. And so because, you know, it's funny because when I hear people say things or they type things like, you know, I did a study or I read a study on, like, where did that study come from? Because scrolling through Facebook, you know, that doesn't, you know, you're using the same terminology as if you had, you know, read articles from from scholars, you know, who, mm -hmm. who have really done the topic. And so, uh, yeah, that that oversensitivity, that, that weird, oh, I've read things and I know so knowledge, yeah, knowledge is power, but not all knowledge is, is right and not all power is good. Yes. I'm in my own bubble and I'm okay being there. You know, I just, if I want to think a certain way, I will. And I, if I don't, I don't have to. You know, here we are with yourself and uh, realizing I'm still not alone. But the message now is amplified further, you know, and people can understand kind of things that we chatted on today. Like, hey, social media, the word K, it's true. <laughs> but you know and we we look at the amplification of and we often think of the negative things and i've just chosen i've, I've made a, a, a like a choice in my own self like a, a conscious choice that because things are amplified guess what i amplify as much positivity as i can mm -hmm. i'm going to be real i'm not bigger coat you know one of the things about uh, the rcmp in particular of course is the postings like, where am i going to be posted that's probably my number one thing, right? Well, I want to join, but man, I, I'm, I'm rooted here and I don't want to move. Like, I, so I get that. All that to say though, is, you know, you can look at, you can look at it on a couple things, right? You can think, this is what you're going to do to me, RCMP, this is what you do to me. I'm Steve, I'm Steve Watkins, I'm a city boy. You're going you're gonna to do that to me. You're going to put me in a town of a thousand people. But lo and behold, because of perspective, because of choosing to look at the positive aspects of it, now I've kind of looked at it like, you're going to do that for me. And it's not because, listen, I'm not naive. I'm not going to, because you care so much about the person. See what I know you have needs. You have staffing things that you're, you're just plugging in, right. you know, to the schedule. I get that. Okay. I get that. But it's, but me being negative or positive doesn't change the outcome except me being negative or positive about a situation changes how I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I go as much, uh, you know, you're going to do things to me. No, I'm going to do things for you. So, but doing things for me. So for my, my particular situation for the RCD, for me to think you're doing it for me has to be a, a, my perspective on that situation. You, does that make sense? It does. You, yes. You have, he has needs. You might need a, this person to be there because of staffing or whatever the reasons mm -hmm. are. Okay, cool. That person can either say you did this to me or that person can change their own that whole like you know life is what what 90 percent of how we respond to things and percent of what actually things happen to us and the same so getting back to the social media thing and the positivity yeah there's an amplification there and i saw this this meme something about be so positive that people start to unfollow you and obviously <laughs> i don't want to follow me because because i am real about things sometimes things suck sometimes yeah you, you get in places where it's just not a good fit so you know and you're going to have choices to make but answering those questions hey look, don't think about it so much as what are you going to do to me but what are you going to do for me and so being in saskatchewan is is not at all was on my radar nothing i wanted but yet it's one of the best things that happened to me of which i didn't want mm -hmm. But so, gratitude, you practice yeah. gratefulness and, and I, you know, your, your family can be raised there. What an experience. It's, it's a part of your life. It's part of the story, you know, from the city yeah. to Saskatchewan and the prairies. And, yeah. you know, again, people don't realize that there's a different love out there with individuals from the prairies, from the West. Oh yeah, man, it's true. You know, people wave out here and it's not the one finger salute. <laughs> <like they> do. <laughs> so, 
uh, so do you guys have Regina police and RCMP out there? Yeah, so the RCMP does not uh, police Reg the city of Regina, like general do policing okay. stuff. Um, that is the city of Regina. They do that. Just on the outskirts, all around the city is the RCMP. So my particular role, like many others, yeah. uh, is not a general duty role, but we're our offices are in, in the city of Regina. So uh, if something happens at my street and I need to call the Popo, I need to call Regina. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Why would someone want to choose to join the RCMP over, say, Regina police when, you know, you can't, there's no stability. No, and that's like I said, that's a very, that's an important question that every individual has to answer for themselves. Because in the end, um, we all sign literally on a line that says, I will be willing to relocate anywhere in Canada. So again, perspective. Mm -hmm. Me was, do I want to go to small town Saskatchewan? No. Am I willing to go and to, to maintain a positive outlook and to, to serve my community? Yes. And so, uh, that's what I got. I got small town Saskatchewan that I didn't necessarily want, but yet in all looking back, man is one of the best things that happened to me. But if I had chosen to stay on the negative path, I don't think that I'd be in, I don't think I'd be talking to you today. Right. I don't think that I'd be talking sure. to you today on the platform. So, um, so there's, there's a couple of things to that. One is adventure, right? When we, when we, and we get transferred um it's an adventure to me i like meeting new people i like experiencing new things um getting involved in different communities and new aesthetics kind of expanding my horizon um but you know i'll also say that um with the rcmp there because of sheer numbers and size um we also have opportunity that word opportunity is huge and for me a guy who does not like to be stagnant and this is Inside of eight years, this is my fifth post, plus a year in Toronto City Police, inside of that eight years. So coming from a guy who does not like to be stagnant, but likes to and likes to grow, uh, and with growth, as I said earlier, there comes growing pains, right? You know, when we can apply those lessons that we learn through that growth, man, it's just going to make us a better person. So um, all that to say, the opportunity that the RC has because of sheer numbers far outweighs the growing pains that it might take for me to, you know, move to another community. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I don't know, if being, um, let's say you want like an ident, like a forensic investigator person, you know, let's say that's the thing, you know, well, the RC, you know, we, we probably have a couple of hundred positions across Canada. So if that's something that you really want, um, and whereas, you know, a municipal, like maybe Regina, they might have three people. So again, mm. just those opportunities. And sometimes, yes, that opportunity to, to take advantage of that might mean uh, a relocation. Um, and maybe it doesn't. And the other thing I'll say is that the RCMP has grown a lot. And this is a message that I do like to get out there is the RCMP has grown a lot into the understanding that it's no longer that that man is the police officer and the wife and kids will just trail along because the wife doesn't have a career mm -hmm. and all, you know, that was way, way back, right? There's an evolution that's happened. And because of that, our staffing unit has also evolved. And and they uh, they've come a long way with maybe keeping someone in a location because it's conducive to them and their family a lot longer than they used to. It used to be that, oh, you know, two, three years, staffing is knocking at your door. Hey, you've been there a couple of years now. It's time to think about moving. Man, I know people who've been in this spot for 8, 10, 12 years. So oh, there's, wow. okay. There's definitely... So it's not, it's not like what I was picturing. Oh, every six months or a year. Okay, next. Yeah. That's right. Hmm. All of my, so inside of eight years, like I said, fifth post plus Toronto. So that's a six one. All of those have become, they were, they were all my decision. Every single one of them. Yeah. I could, if I, so, so theory, in, in theory, if I really wanted to stay in the same post that I started with, you know, eight years ago, I could still be there. Before we get going here, how is it living in a small town? Are there young families there? Are you guys the only ones? What is it like being out there? <clears throat> so small town has a very... Uh, has a very healthy element to it. And what, what I would, and this is just what I consider healthy, yeah. that friendly atmosphere, that uh, little bit of a, uh, hey, I'm there for you. You know, you're there for me. We're all, you know, that whole village raising a child idea. Uh, once you get to a certain size, that sort of goes away. And 
but there is good that comes with that going away too, right? Because there's that anonymity. So I have literally been mm-hmm. in, in a group line where two people in front of me, I just arrested maybe the night before and maybe they fought me, yeah. you know, and, and that's part of it. So the interesting thing is, so me, a city boy going to a small town, one of the lessons that I had to apply to my life, was that that small town person that maybe they maybe they had been drinking and this is just hypothetical maybe they had been drinking uh two nights ago they got rowdy i had to get an arrest because of whatever um you know and that person decided to they didn't like me at that moment and maybe they wanted to um show me that they show me this like in one way or another uh and and so you know you you gain compliance and you, you make it safe and then you you deal with that person appropriately um and then two later now they're they're sober they're a nice person they're standing in line in front of you and uh at first it was strange for me because I'm like, Oh, there's, there's Jimmy. He, man, he just, you know, he just fought me today. But you know, that's because I'm the outsider coming in. Right. The person is living in their small town. They've lived there. If they live there, all, um, that's normal to them. So you have to kind of get over the fact that they have a job to do. Right. So there are some of those learning curves, uh, especially a city boy going into a small town, but man, they're, one of the other things that used to frustrate is how things closed. Because in mm-hmm. Toronto, if you need a 24 hours a day, right, you can go get a loaf of bread whenever you want. Small town, not so much. I think mean, it's at five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever. Um, and at first I hated that. But I hated that because, man, I was I was always flooring it. I was always on gear nine. I mean, I'm always redlining it because that that was what I was used to. That's the city life. You're go 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 and one of the best things that's happened to me in small town is that it slowed me down it allowed me to take a breath and to really just enjoy the moments of life and not always thinking about what's next what's next what's next Mm -hmm. and i think that is a little bit of a thing with us right like we're scrolling well what's what's the next picture what's the next meme what's the next reel and i think there's value found in just taking a breath as the old saying says, stop and smell the roses. And so small town has helped me do that. Yeah. That's why in mid-December, I've decided, okay, a month, I just need a break from podcasting. I just need to take take a second to myself, recalibrate, you know, otherwise you're no good to anybody else if you're just burning yourself. <laughs> I mean, we've all it's, been there, yeah. right? Burnout's real. Yeah. The biggest problem about burnout is that, and good on you for recognizing that and to, you know, be proactive Guys, friends out there, if you're listening to this and you be proactive, look, I don't want to change my oil of my vehicle after my engine has seized up. I want to be on a routine. I want to be on a thing where, hey, I may not even feel like I necessarily need this, but I've been going pretty hard. And so the only way you're going to get that is by reflecting, by stopping for a moment, pausing, think, what can I do? So take care of yourself, you know, do that preventative maintenance, that PM. And uh, because you want longevity, this, this isn't no sprint, man. This is a life and yeah. the chapters of our life, they keep turning, the pages keep turning and we're going to start writing new chapters. But look, if you're burnt out, you're not only going to not write your own book, you're going to soil the book that you've written. And now you're also going to be liable and you'll probably soil someone else's story. So take care of yourself, man. Be that preventative maintenance. Person. Thanks Steve for today. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's my pleasure, brother. It's my pleasure. It's so good to, so good to chit chat with you. And Absolutely. Look forward to continuing to listen to uh, the different folks that you have on your podcast. And uh, what a great tool to have running on a treadmill. And then to you go. It's awesome. Thank you. Mm-hmm.